Hey, what's up, everybody? Noi here. Let me just adjust everything, make sure that we're going live so that we can get the most out of this awesome training. There we go. I'm going to present that. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Noi. If you're new here, um, my name is Noi, and I founded Phoenix Over 40. And what we do here is we help women up level their lives. That is what I am passionate about doing. It's sort of been a through line for my entire life. And I am thrilled to bring this training to you today about how to break or breaking down certain barriers uh, in order to up level our identity. And in this training, we are going to um, really deep dive into what habit change coaching is, um, how it differs from other coaching methodologies and how it differs from therapy and counseling and things like that. And we're gonna really kind of break down um, a lot of the, the confusion that might be out there about it so that you can see if it is a tool that can help you up level your life. And in this training, we're gonna be really talking a lot about identity and belief systems and habits and how all of those things fit together so that we can use that information when we're trying to up level our life. So um, if you are joining me, there are two ways to join. You can join uh, live by Zoom and there is a link in the meeting invite and, or you can join live by Facebook. So you can just um, be in there. If you are in Facebook, just know that I can't well, let me see if I can try to pull it up on my phone, maybe have it sitting in the background. Okay, good. Looks like it is going live. I want to make sure that the sound is working. So if you are joining me live by Facebook, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that the sound is working um, so that we can have everything going on there. Alexa's talking to me. <laughs> okay, so it looks like everything is working and we are going. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. I just wanted to make sure technology has been not so happy with me this morning for whatever reason. It took me like three or four times just to get logged in. So I'm really happy that you guys are here and that um, we can do this training together because it is going to be so impactful. I am going to share my screen um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the background of why I chose to go into uh, this type of, I guess, career and some of my history and how I went from um, employee for 25 years, working in administrative positions in so many different fields, you know, always working for other people with a time clock and a steady paycheck, and how I transitioned into being an entrepreneur. I'm going to share more about that transition and the mind, sh mind shift and identity change that had to happen in order for me to successfully make it happen. So if you're trying to create change in your life, you have to shift these identities about what you believe about yourself. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. What I'd like to bring up are some really sort of sort of startling statistics to start with. And this is the groundwork of why I do what I do. You know, people are in crisis right now. Um, you know, in the United States, six in 10 American adults have at least one chronic lifestyle disease. Chronic lifestyle diseases are um, diseases that are the results of our habits. They are the results of the way that we're treating our body. And um, some examples I'll go into, we'll actually look at the CDC website, but six in 10, six in 10 Americans have at least one chronic lifestyle disease. Four out of 10 have two or more lifestyle diseases. And then on top of that, 53% of Americans are unhappy at their jobs, right? I know I was, I was one of those statistics right there. More than three in five Americans are lonely with more and more people reporting feeling like they're left out, poorly understood and lacking companionship. 
you know, 65 million Americans suffer from depression and anxiety, and that rate is growing. And if you actually look at the trajectory of the last 10 years, it is on a constant upswing. And COVID sure didn't help that e either. And approximately half of all adults experience difficulties in intimate relationships. I don't know if you, I know I definitely have that backstory as well, um, really difficult marriage. And I share a lot about that in some of my other videos, or if you'd like to watch uh, more information about that, you're definitely welcome to do that, or I can have a conversation and we can just chat about it. But I'd like to look at also um, some really interesting statistics from the CDC too. Watch as I just move here. So this is the actual CDC website. And I wanna ask, what is this costing us? Because look, these are the diseases that are considered chronic lifestyle diseases. We have heart disease and stroke, the biggest killer of women, by the way, and the biggest killer of men too. But I mean, we have cancer. I, I myself am a cancer survivor. We have diabetes, obesity, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, tooth decay. These are diseases that could be preventable if we were doing things the right way, the right things with our bodies. And yet it is costing 4.1 trillion in annual healthcare expenditures for people with these chronic and mental health conditions. That's, to me, that feels not acceptable, especially when these are preventable diseases. Sorry, my computer does this every once in a while where I have to open and close it. Otherwise it gets frozen. But I'd also like to take a look at our impact around the world, okay? Because we're, we don't live in a bubble, right? This is non-communicable diseases, so other chronic diseases kill 41 million people each year, and it is 74% of all deaths globally. Three quarters of all deaths globally are from are from non-communicable diseases. So not leprosy, not malaria, not things that you can get, not AIDS, chronic lifestyle diseases. People are suffering all over the world. You know, and I think the truth is that these statistics are probably telling you what you probably already know, which is that people are more burned out, sicker and lonelier than they have ever been before. And maybe you even feel that way in your life. Or maybe you see it in the lives of your loved ones. And I chose to become a health and life coach to make a positive impact on the world. Because I believe coaching is the most effective way to do this. And that's after 15 years in active ministry in a church with my husband in thriving churches. And years, almost my whole life, studying psychology and sociology and participating myself in counseling and therapy since I was 16 years old. See, what I found is that the solution is far simpler than it might seem, and it's not always easy. I want to suggest that the problem that is creating more disease and dissatisfaction than ever before, even, even though we have more science, more data, and more research, and even an abundance more than ever before, is that people don't always do what they're supposed to. They don't even do what they want to do half the time. Let's be real. You know, it's like, I know I'm supposed to sleep. I know I'm supposed to drink water. I know I'm supposed to exercise, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> Why does that happen? See, even if we know what we're supposed to do for our health, for our lives, why don't we do it? Why isn't it easy? Why doesn't knowing translate into doing? See, if I want to have more energy, why isn't, e why isn't it easy to go to sleep earlier instead of staying up late and binging Netflix? I'm sure you've never done that before. No, only me. <laughs> if I want a new job, why isn't it easy to work on my resume and network instead of distracting myself with busyness and never getting around to it? So why isn't it easier to do the things I want to do for myself instead of still doing the things that are getting the same results that I don't want? And the reason why is because changing habits is hard. And if we could do it by ourselves, we would. Very often, we just can't. And that's what we wanna take a look at today. Why is it so hard for us to change on our own? You see, we are creatures of habit. Got some cool slides here. 
There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's hard to go back and forth. We're creatures of habit and studies show that 45 to 95% of our behavior actually occurs out of habit, either unconsciously or in reaction to external demands. So since we're creatures of habit, then it follows that if you can change someone's habits, then you are changing the very thing that determines their health and quality of life. More simply said, if you can change a habit, you can change a life. That's right, you know, but what is a habit? Let's get into the weeds about what a habit is. Let's just define that really quickly. Well, there are the little rituals that we do every day. When you first wake up, you go to the bathroom, brush your teeth. Maybe you have a habit of when it's three o'clock and your energy starts to dip, you run out for a frappuccino or some sort of caffeinated pick-me-up. Maybe one of your habits is taking your dog out for a walk after dinner. Maybe it's a habit of eating pizza five nights a week. You know, we all have habits. We all have habits. And now some of the habits are health promoting and some are health destroying. Some habits are bringing us closer to life that we want and the goals that we want. And some habits are taking us further away. And I believe that coaches can make a massive impact on helping people change their habits so that habits become more health promoting, promoting and bring us closer to the life that we actually want for ourselves. This is why I'm always talking about becoming your bravest self. When we want a life for ourselves, we want to incorporate habits that bring us closer to it so that we can become more health promoting and actually achieve our goals and stop getting in our own way. So I believe that habit change coaching is an incredibly exciting, game-changing development in the fields of health and personal growth. And I'm gonna dive into some of the science behind what creates lasting habit change. Because when you're trying to create change in yourself, you're gonna have to go beyond a checklist of eat this or not that, or do this and don't do that. It's not about that. Learning what to do, you know, how to eat healthy, how to ask for what you want in your relationships, or even how to ask for a raise or a promotion at work, that's actually the easy part. The internet is full of information and we're flooded by it. Anyone can find out what to do. The hard part is actually getting yourself to do what you know that you should do. The habit change coaching method is a unique combination of behavioral science. There we go again. Sorry about this. It's the behavioral science. We have behavioral science. It's a combination of neuroscience. It's a combination of positive psychology, appreciative inquiry, neuro-linguistic programming, and motivational interviewing. All of these things together create the habit change coaching method. And, you know, the secret sauce of habit change coaching is asking the specific questions in a specific sequence that will uncover and transform people's underlying reason for staying stuck. Staying stuck. Wait a minute we have reasons for staying stuck? Why would anybody want to stay stuck? That sounds crazy, right? Guess what? We all do it. We all have and hold on to reasons, positive reasons to stay the same. And it all comes down to our unique programming. See, each of us has unique coding or programming in our brains called beliefs. And those beliefs, you know, the prefect, um, Prefix of belief means, uh, is the B, right? And, and B means to, um, to, to make or to cause something to be happen. So if you're gonna make friends with somebody, for instance, you befriend them. You know, if you're gonna make a, somebody feel little, you're going to belittle them. So the B in belief is to cause something to happen. Now, the leaf, is actually Old English, which means dear or valuable. So to believe something means to make it dear and valuable, to cause it to be dear and valuable and to happen. Sorry about that. If we didn't have any beliefs, the world would feel like a very dangerous place. So beliefs give us a sense of security. Um, now, some beliefs are so ingrained in us, they're just in innate that we don't even really have to look or remember to believe them, we just do. And then we continue to look for evidence to prove those beliefs are true. So 
you know, and, and we're, so, so our beliefs create our thoughts. You know, if we believe that the world is full of liars, we're going to notice everybody lying. If you believe your boyfriend or your girlfriend doesn't love you, you'll likely look for evidence to support this and then behave in ways that will make you right about that self-fulfilling prophecies. So think about your own life and try to objectively get curious about your own belief systems. What are you telling yourself about a situation and how it might actually be creating that situation in the first place? So our beliefs create our thoughts. Our thoughts create our feelings. And then our feelings go on to create our behavior and habits and our behavior and habits create the results. After we see the results, they come right back over here to reinforce our beliefs. This is the science of the way that our brain works. You can see how important belief systems are when it comes to changing your experience, okay? So it wouldn't be, for instance, congruent with your belief system to be skinny if you believed that you were fat. You know, you may actually obsessively notice how fat you are. No matter how much weight you lose, you're placing your value on being fat if you believe you're fat. Now, this is kind of like call, seeing yourself with fat eyes, right? It's the fat eyes syndrome. No matter how much weight you lose, you still look in the mirror and see yourself with fat eyes. I know I suffered with this big time throughout my life. No matter how much weight I would lose, I would look in the mirror and I would only see myself with fat eyes, despite what, what the, the scale would say. Our experience is actually the evidence of what we believe and what we honor and hold dear. So if you wanna know what someone believes, then you need to notice what they're experiencing. And the good news about this is that when you change your beliefs, you can completely change your experience of yourself, of other people, and of the world. And let's look at why that is. Because our belief systems are all a bunch of our identity. Our identity is just all of our belief systems created together, what we see about the world, what we believe about ourselves. And these beliefs create those thoughts that we were looking at, okay? I believe that I am a meat eater. If I believe I am a meat eater, then the thoughts of never being able to eat meat again might cause me severe anxiety. And I will never be able to stick to a vegan diet if I believe that I'm a meat eater because it'll cause anxiety, that feeling of your beliefs being rubbed raw. And that behavior then will, no matter how much I want to, will begin to confirm that belief that I'm a meat eater. This is just who I am. This is, this is what I do, okay? So we have to go all the way back to the beginning of this sequence, which means creating new beliefs. And, that's, and, that, and, and this is how habit change is created, is we have to actually begin to rewire this entire pattern and this is where habit change coaching actually stands out from other types of coaching and therapy. Because look, I've researched many different types of coaching, many different styles, you know, before settling on this particular style. And, and I've been actually in therapy, like I said, since my first nervous breakdown when I was 16 years old. Some try to teach change on the level of action, you know, just do something different. Or if you just stop it, stop that behavior. But the action originated at the level of belief. So if the belief isn't changed, the action can't change, or the action at least can't be sustained. It might be able to be changed for a short period of time, but it can't be sustained. And some try to try to teach um, teach at the level of feeling. For instance, therapy is a great example of how to enter at maybe a moment in our past where we felt particularly raw. And then we start dealing with those feelings. Just share your feelings. Well, how did that, how did you feel about that? But those feelings came from thoughts, which came from beliefs. So while it feels good to express your feelings, it doesn't result in lasting change if you don't deal with the belief. 
Now, some coaching trainings try to teach change at the level of the thought, just think something different. But where do thoughts originally come from? Beliefs and our identity. So if the belief isn't changed, the thoughts can't change and the change can't be sustained yet again. Now, you might be asking, because I know, I know some of you are thinking, but where do beliefs come from? Like I said, beliefs come from our identity and our programming. And programming is just a funny word that kind of stands out for all of the information that you were given about yourself and the world at a very young age. I've mentioned this in other trainings. 90% of everything we believe was actually created before the age of six, when our brain was growing the fastest and taking in huge amounts of information. Another huge brain growth is our teenage years. So we're also bringing a large amount of our identity into our teenage years. After that, a lot of it just becomes reinforced. If a certain belief system was created, and then it's able to see different evidence, then it can be changed. And so only the belief systems that have been, been reinforced over and over and over by this age are the ones that are holding us back. Those are the ones that are the most important to us that create our identity. Now, there are three basic human needs that all humans share. These are the need for love, safety, and belonging. These are our called biological imperatives. These are the things that we need in order to live in this world. If we do not have love, safety, and belonging, we do not thrive on a very basic human form. So, so these human needs, um, these, our beliefs tell us that if any of these needs feel like they're at risk of being lost, and you know, if they do feel at risk of being lost or a part of our brain will tell us to stop and slam on the brakes in order to keep those needs intact, right? So, so here's an example. This is kind of a cool example. I like to think of, this is called, this, they're called the rubber band example, okay? You're gonna picture yourself with a rubber band around your waist, around one side and around the other side. The rubber band is big, strong, and it's attached to this telephone pole right? And that pole represents your identity and all the beliefs that you believe about yourself in life, you know, and what you need, you know, what you need to do, how you get love, receive love, how you have to feel love, to feel safe. All of these things become a part of your belief system and your identity. So the rubber band is around you. And let's call this the pole of identity. Now imagine that you start walking away from the pole towards the result you want. Maybe it's a size six jeans, maybe it's more energy, a flat, calm tummy, or a booming, you know, a booming entrepreneurial practice. As you're walking toward that result, the rubber band is being pulled tighter and tighter and tighter against your skin because it's still firmly around the pole of identity. So we're stretching the rubber band, but the pole is not bending. It's standing strong and firm and the rubber band gets tighter and tighter as you get closer and closer towards what you want. And eventually the rubber band stops stretching and it snaps or it retracts back to the pole of identity and goes backwards. Have you ever thought to yourself that it feels like something's holding you back? Literally holding you back. That's actually true. And that's what's happening when what's holding you back is your subconscious beliefs about what you need to do or be or have in order to keep the feelings of love, safety, and belonging intact. So I'm gonna give you the example of how I was able to shift my identity from employing, employee mindset to entrepreneurial mindset. You know, my decision to become an entrepreneur came upon the back of some pretty significant life and identity changes that I had already been experiencing since my divorce in 2018. You know, I'd learned uh, a great deal about health and brain science just on my own up to that point. And I had cultivated a much more expanded awareness of myself and my programming. I realized that there were things in my head that were holding me back. And I would started to learn how to identify them. And I had successfully destimulated my nervous system through years of a very specific kind of meditation, a meditation that blends neuroscience and Eastern transcendental meditation together because I'm, I'm a big brain science nerd. So I had to find the meditation that I felt was going to actually deal with the physiological changes in my brain. 
So I've been able to destimulate my nervous system. And if you'd like more information about that, by the way, um, make sure you comment or um, give me, you know, DM me, and then we'll talk about that. It is, it is a much bigger conversation. <laughs> But after I was finally able to destimulate my nervous system, because stress had literally racked my body into numerous illnesses, I, had fi I could finally then think clearly. I could finally um, gain some momentum in putting pieces together in all of the relationships that I had destroyed in my life. And my body, I was able to destimulate my nervous system and heal myself from a lot of the illnesses that had caused me to need to walk away from my marriage in the first place. But most importantly, I got my self-esteem back. Matter of fact, I'm not even ever sure that I remember having a self-esteem, but I put my self-esteem back together because I had surrounded myself with people that had the mindset that I wanted to have. Successful women who'd also survived crazy marriages and had reinvented themselves later in life. We were on the journey together. They had the ambition, they had the positivity, and they were who I needed to create the support and accountability that we each needed to help each other shift our identities from victims to victors. It's really easy to get trapped by a victim mentality, to believe that things are happening to you. But that victim mentality continues to perpetuate itself. And until we can shift that identity from victim to victor, we can't get out of it. So we did that for each other. We became, we became our more, basically we became self-aware heroes of our own story. We were badasses. We call each other the badasses. We had to forgive those that hurt us. We had to own our responsibility and we had to vision for what we wanted our life to look at. So many personal development doors began just to open up, open up around me. And I said yes to every opportunity because I stopped blaming others and started taking responsibility for my own growth. And I became a victor. I became a warrior. I became the hero of my story. Matter of fact, we even started training for a Spartan race together. We were going to do a Spartan race and then cancer hit. And my diagnosis literally came out of nowhere. I had actually decided to get a mammogram. After a year, we were doing annual mammograms because um, in Hawaii, our doctors actually encourage us um, women to get mammograms every year from the age of 40 up. And it was interesting to me that in Wyoming, where I just come from, they told me that they didn't push it until 45, but in Hawaii, they started at age 40. And so I just had a mammogram the year before, but this time when I went in, there were a bunch of speckles, just little speckles all over my breasts. And um, the doctor said, actually, that's really normal. We see this all the time. 95% of it could be maybe a lotion you have on your skin or maybe sun damage, probably no big deal. But this particular doctor happened to notice these two little speckles were really close together, which seems weird because it seemed like everything was close together, but he happened to just sort of focus in on these two. And what, and he said, just in case, you know, I really just want to biopsy those two. It's probably nothing. I kind of felt like he was trying to upsell me. Honestly, I was like, oh, here we go. Another expensive procedure because I had a belief system that all doctors are out to, you know, screw us. And for whatever reason, I just said, fine, let's go ahead and biopsy whatever. I, you know, I've never done a biopsy before. It just so happened that where he biopsied those two little specks happened to be directly in the middle of a growth of invasal, invasive ductal carcinoma that was actually less than the size of an eraser. So it's not even thick enough that you could see it on a mammogram. It had just started. Now, fast forward nine months and three surgeries later, oh, I'm recovering from the most trauma traumatizing, the most traumatic time of my life. My physical fitness gains all diminished no longer training for a Spartan race. My dreams of ever wanting to, to be in a Spartan race just dashed and you know, COVID had already kind of complicated that anyway. But something else was born in me at that moment. As a result of this new lease in life and seeing certain non-coincidental coincidences um, that I could not deny were the evidence to me of a higher power 
I started to desire something different for myself. You know, I wanted to see my kids more. I have this new lease on life. I want to see my kids more. They, they live in the mainland. I had to leave them to start my life all over again. And then my desire to travel the world began to crop back up. Things I hadn't been thinking about since I was a teenager. I'm fascinated by cultures. I'm a total nerd when it comes to learning stuff. And all of a sudden, I was unhappy with sitting behind a desk and helping everybody else around me be successful. The through line, I mean, the, the through line of my entire life up to that point, suddenly I was unhappy with doing it. I didn't want to be limited to four weeks of vacation a year. I didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck and constantly have to learn something new or, or be at a place for a certain amount of time before I got a raise. You know, I'm, I was tired of making everybody else successful and them making the money from it. And I was living paycheck to paycheck. My identity took a shift. And that identity that I had been forging before cancer even showed up was a victor, not a victim anymore. And all of a sudden, I believed I could be the victor of my life and that God had saved me and given me a chance to prove it. I wanted to make these dreams happen. I needed to get up off my ass and I needed to do something about it. So I began researching many different types of opportunities. I didn't even know what I wanted. I just knew I wanted to do something that allowed me to work for myself. And all of them you know, allowed me to work remotely for myself. I pursued you know, two of them specifically that didn't actually feel entirely right as I was pursuing them anyway, but I kind of, I took them to their natural end until they proved that they just weren't a good fit for me. And then I sort of fell into a new career that I, I honestly feel more is like home than anything that I've ever done my entire life. And that's coaching. See, I researched a lot of different types of coaching. I didn't even know coaches existed, honestly, before this whole situation. I didn't know people got paid for this. I'd been coaching people my whole life. I was in ministry. I was coaching all of our parishioners. I've been coaching my friends. I've been always been a coach, but I didn't realize people could make a, a living from it. And so I started researching types of coaching because I, it was important to me that I found a style that I knew was effective. I'm not a salesperson. I cannot sell something if I don't believe in it. And so I have to know that it works in order for me to pour all of my time and attention and money into it. And I found habit change coaching. But in that journey, so that, and that took a year from deciding that I was going to work for myself to firming up the vision, going after the resources I needed to, and then sticking to it. But along that evolutionary path, I was able to identify the barriers that hold us all back. And I want to share those insights with you today, because I had to defeat those barriers one by one that allowed me to successfully shift my identity from employee to entrepreneur, from administrative assistant, executive assistant, basically administration, the helper to a coach. And I'll be discussing each of these things in detail in the next three live trainings, but I want to give just an overview of what those are right now so that you know what to expect in the next live trainings. So the very first thing we ha I had to shift was my fear. You see, there are five core human fears that humans all share and those fears are rooted in our belief systems and our belief systems often kind of revolve around each of those fears and they begin to kind of morph around these fears. So these fears are very much in the center of our identity. One of the fears that I was able to identify and uh, allow myself the opportunity to rewire is the, is the loss of autonomy, the fear of losing your autonomy or the fear of losing yourself. So one of the reasons why this fear was created in me was because in my relationship with my husband, it was a very codependent relationship. I was trying to protect him from pain at all loss. So I, and this is true, I can see as, as a fear throughout my life, I always believed that I needed to be valuable to other people. But what happened in my marriage is he began to suck my identity from me. He began to to or his needs became my needs his 
his uh, stress became my stress. His, his mental illness became my mental illness. And I started to lose myself. And it was finally sort of hit this crescendo when my body started to create stress-related illnesses because of it was losing its autonomy. It lost itself. So when I was transitioning to being an entrepreneur, I had to learn what a new self looked like. That's how you, that's how you shift is one of the ways that you shift this particular fear is you have to get really clear about what this new self looks like. And then you have to look for evidence for it. And you have to be really intentional about working through that fear every time it shows up. And I have a lot of strategies and exercises that I was able to learn that help us deal with fears in the right way so that we can transform fears for our clients and use them as fuel instead of, instead of them holding us back. The next barrier that I was able to identify is our focus. You see, where focus goes, energy flows. That is a very popular Tony Robbins quote. And I was able to become even more self-aware of the things that I was focusing on. Because sometimes we just go through life focusing on a lot of things or having things in our external environment that are actually adding adding uh, belief systems into our head that we don't even realize are there. We take in 11 billion bits of information every second and only 4 billion of it is actually conscious. So what I was focusing on and where my energetic energy was actually flowing was something that I was able to get aware on and identify. And this is actually why I've incorporated a clear and compelling vision as a part of the cornerstones of my particular program is, and I actually offer this as a free service to anybody who wants to start their Phoenix journey. Um, I can help you with a specific coaching sequence, get clear on your vision because it starts with vision. And um, sorry. And so um, that that's something, if you would like some more information about that, I'll actually cover that a little bit here in the end. The third barrier to becoming our, to shifting our identity is our, perspective. If focus is about what we're looking at, perspective is about fine-tuning that picture to ensure that it's reality, right? So here you see this big hand. Here's this little person. It looks like that little person is, is a mini, is a mini person, right? But the truth is, this is a result of perspective. And the truth in our life is that sometimes we can look at a situation or we can look at a thought or we can look at a behavior and we can still not see the true reality of it. And I recently did a, a short video about the importance of perspective and, the sh and, a, and a certain shift, one particular shift of I have to, to I get to. The power of our words inside our heads and outside are habitual. And, and uh, they can actually be indicators of self-conscious beliefs and identity programs. I listen for these types of phrases when I speak with the women I coach because they provide me with the areas in their life where they are stuck. And little by little, I use them as opportunities to refine their perspective, their perspective on life, their perspective on maybe a situation that happened to them when we can understand the way to refine our perspective, then we can see the truth. And then that truth provides the evidence we need to shift our belief system. So these were the three things that are a part of um, the barriers that hold us back from up-leveling our life. And these three things I'm going to go into even more detail about in the upcoming training. So I definitely encourage you to um, stick around, sign up for those trainings, be with me. I love to share this information because I want to see people get unstuck. This is my goal. I was stuck. I was able to get unstuck. There's still some areas where I am stuck, where I continue to grow because we're all a work in progress, right guys? We're all a work in progress. But if I can help somebody that's where I was five years ago because of where I am now, then it was worth it. It, and, it, and it contributes to the positive outcome in our world. Because guess what, guys? Women run this world. I don't care what anybody says. Men do not run this world. 
we let them think that they run this world. <laughs> and that is the beautiful thing about women, but we're the worker bees. We're the ones that are just give, give, giving, and we're shape, shape, shaping our children and our families and our jobs. And let's start to make sure that we're shaped right so that we can shape our world. And that is what I do as a health and life coach. I help women specifically. This is my calling. I believe I'm called to being to being women, any woman that wants to really begin to deal with the things in her head that are holding her back and really get clear about the ways to expand her awareness and to change her life and her environment, let's do that. Let's do that together. Um, and I'm gonna just share really quick about how I do that, okay? The Phoenix fire is created by these three things. It starts with that compelling vision. I mentioned that earlier. We have to understand what we're fighting for, but we don't, I mean, it's just not just about understanding, we have to see it. We have to believe it's possible. It has to be so compelling that it pulls us toward it. After that, all of my experience as administrative assistant came into creating a strategic plan. This is what I am good at. I, this is my special sauce of who I am is I'm super strategic person. This is one of the reasons why I was able to become a project manager, I was able to become some of the most very successful executive assistant for a lot of pretty successful executives. And I do this because I know what it takes to accomplish a goal. I know how to put the right steps in the right order. But the support and accountability, I couldn't have done it without my friends. I couldn't have done it without this coaching program and teaching me the little things that I needed to learn about how to give the right support and the right accountability because we can't fight these battles if we can't truly see what's going on. And it takes somebody outside of us to say, hey, I just noticed that you said that. Can we, can we talk about that for a second? Can we get clear on that thought? That's what a coach does. This is what I get to do. I get to do it every day with my clients and I get to see shift happen right in front of my eyes. And it's, it's transformative. So if you would like to have more information and possibly explore how to just even set up this part. This is, this is the result of my strategic call, my strategy call, and that's completely free. Conversations are free, guys. I am giving away part of the puzzle and it doesn't take anything but a conversation because strategic questions are, are my methodology. They are my tools and those strategic questions unlock your vision. and. Let's start, it just starts with the chat. I've been trying to uh, get out to a lot of you guys here in the group um, on the messenger. Believe me, that is me. That's not a catfish, that's actually me. I'm trying to connect with you guys because I'd like to know what's going on in your lives. It helps me create live, pro, uh, live trainings that I know are gonna be beneficial for you, but it also identifies a way that I might be able to help. So you know, if I reach out to you, I encourage you look for that because that's just an opportunity to chat. I really do care about the women that are brought into my circle of influence because I believe very much that God, the universe, great spirit, whatever, a being higher than myself has called me into this calling. And, um, and then there's email. Feel free to email me. You can reach out to me by email. And I do have a website, it's still in progress, but I do have a website. Um, it's very basic, but phoenixover40.com is that website and you can find more and more ways to connect with me there and set up a strategy call as well. That's it, that's my spiel. Not an hour this week, but <laughs> it was a lot of information. And I realized that I talk really fast. So I encourage you, if you have questions, if you'd like a little more clarity and you'd like to just explore what habit change coaching is and how it could become a tool for, for helping you get unstuck from a certain area of your life and finally accomplish your bravest self, chat me up. Starts with a chat and I'm here to listen, to, to offer my support, to offer any guidance that I can offer. All right, have a wonderful week. We will come back same time, same place to talk about fears and the major fears and how they show up in the different areas of our life. Because often one fear actually pervades all the areas of our life in different ways. And we're gonna learn how to identify how that works next week. Have a wonderful week, Phoenixes. Again, I'm Noi. Thank you for being here and I will see you next week.